Hey everyone, what's going on? My name's Alicia and welcome to the AA Homestead Kitchen. So what we are doing in the kitchen today is we are going to be freeze drying mashed potatoes. I have got my homegrown mashed potatoes here and I went through what we had down in the basement because that's where I keep mine. I don't keep them in the kitchen at all because if they get any sun exposure, they will turn green. When I pick these potatoes from what I have in the basement, and I don't wash these before storing, I don't wanna store these in the basement wet because I don't wanna promote any diseases that these potatoes might produce as I'm storing them. And I have all different kinds, and I try to keep them small, as you can see, just because I wanna keep the bigger ones for a baking potato. So I don't mind using the smaller ones for something like this. I have four different types of potatoes that I'm using here today. I have them separated into individuals, but the way that I'm storing them, I wanted to go through and make sure I took out the ones that had the bad spots. So some of these might have some spots in them and that's totally okay, I can cut that out. I just wanted to make sure that I removed that from the batch so it doesn't infect any other potatoes. And you can see here that I have a couple that do have some spots. So I'm going to be using these up, no problem. I do have four different kinds of potatoes. I've got gold russet, Kennebec, your traditional red skin potato, and Yukon gold. I have a mixture of these in here. I just kind of went through and saw what I had that were bad spots and just wanted to get them out of the way. So I'm going to be doing this process a little bit different than I typically would with eggs or anything else that I might put in the freeze dryer reason why is because when you are doing mashed potatoes it is very dense so you want to make sure that you're not overloading your trays because then it may cause your freeze dryer to get too much of an ice buildup or it just you might have to do a second run so i am going to be measuring out how much i'm putting on these trays I have a weight here where I, or scale that I can put these trays on to know how much are going on here. And I already pre-weighed out my potatoes. I've got six pounds here and I did an extra pound just because if I have to cut out any bad spots, which I do, that I had showed you. So let's go ahead and get this process started. I have my cutting board, I have my knife, I have my pot filled with cold water. That way my potatoes don't brown in the process. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dice these up. I am not worried about the skins just because it, some of these are really, really small and it would just cost me more work to take the skins off. So that's honestly up to you and whatever your preference is. I'm going to try to keep the potatoes the same size so they all cook evenly. And you can also add salt if you wanted to to your water some people do some people don't all upon preference but i'm going to go ahead and finish dicing up these potatoes and get them in the water and get them boiling on the stove all right i've got all those potatoes chopped up i've got them in two separate pans on the stove as you can see over here i wasn't able to fit everything in one pan i mean i could have but it was just Re more reasonable to do too. So I did two. Now we're just going to wait for those to boil and cook and then when those are done we'll be back. To make sure that these potatoes are done is you're going to take a potato and then you're going to put a fork through it and if it goes through your potatoes are done and which they are. I did drain these already so I spared you that. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to blend all of these up. I am not going to use a hand masher for this. I am going to use my blender. It is going to be so much quicker and easier instead of using hand masher. <laughs> I've got all my potatoes blended up and these are ready to go on to my Harvest Right trays. Now, as you noticed, I didn't put anything in these potatoes. These are completely dry. There's even no seasoning in here. My plan is to not season these until after I rehydrate them. 
The reason why is the seasonings will be fine. The problem is, is when you start getting into milk or butter, it has a high fat content. And what happens is, is if you keep adding that, like I would normally make mashed potatoes, it will go rancid quicker. So I don't wanna put any of that in right now. My plan is to do that after I rehydrate these so I don't have to worry about this batch going bad, especially if you plan on storing these for a long time storage. Now my plan is to use this up throughout the winter so it's technically not a long time storage so I may be safe to put butter or milk in here, but right now I just choose not to do that because I don't know exactly how long it's going to take me to get through these mashed potatoes. I've got everything set up that I need. I've got my scale with my tray on it and I've got it all leveled out so it is at zero starting. And I'm gonna do just about a pound of mashed potatoes per tray. Like I said, when it comes to potatoes, because of how dense they are, you do want to be careful on how much you are putting on your trays so you don't have issues with your freeze dryer or have to run it a second time. Now, the thing with this is because my potatoes are still hot, I need to let these cool down. There has to be a cool down time with anything that you put in the freeze dryer that may be hot. Because if you're going to put hot food in the freeze dryer, what's going to happen is you may have an explosion. I personally have not experienced it, but I have seen it before. It does happen. And the last thing you wanna do is be cleaning mashed potatoes out of your freeze dryer. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna get these loaded up and then I'm going to get these trays even, or the mashed potatoes evenly distributed on the trays. And then I'm probably gonna put these at least in the freeze, freezer for a little while to let these cool down before I get them into the freeze dryer. So once I'm done filling these, I will be right back. I got all my trays filled and you can see here, it's not going anywhere, but it, I was using a spatula and it wasn't really working. So what I do is I just use my hands and kind of like how you make, you know, dough for pizza. I just did that. So these trays are filled. They are still warm. So I am going to go ahead and probably let them sit out for a little bit longer and then these are going in the freeze dryer. The freeze dryer is ready to go. I've got the drain valve closed and I already did the 15 minutes of start time before I put the food in there. So let's go ahead and get these mashed potatoes in. I'm hoping that they have cooled down enough where it won't be any issues. Now this is a four tray freeze dryer. There are are all different kinds of sizes out there. I wanna say that this is the medium freeze dryer. There is a small and there is a large. I don't know if there's an extra large, but I do know that there is one that has six trays, I believe, but I don't know if it goes any higher than that. But I really enjoy this freeze dryer and it is amazing what it can do. So we've got all the trays in there. What I do is I've got like a little card just to ensure that I'm getting good suction on this. I slip that card in there to get a good seal around the ring. And I don't know if you can see it, but I'm going to click continue and then it's going to start the freezing process. And then when the freezing process is done, that pump in the corner there is going to kick on and it's going to take all of that moisture out of the mashed potatoes. Once that's done, then I go ahead and store it. So now that we've got all this in here, we just wait for it to finish. And when it is done, I will be back and show you the next step. So we are back. It has been about 17 hours since this freeze dryer has been running. I think I put it in close to five o'clock. So, and it is currently 1.30. I woke up a little bit late this morning. I was up around 12 o'clock and it was beeping when I was 
up at that time letting me know that it has finished so I did press the warm tray function so the trays are warming it was about negative 30 degrees when I hit that button I could take them out at that temperature um, obviously it's gonna be a little uncomfortable on the hands doing that I could use a pot holder but it's just easier to wait for that to warm the trays I think about 130 degrees is when it stops warming and then once it does that if you don't take them out right away it is going to drop back down to make sure that those potatoes don't get warm this is what my screen is going to look like and up here that's where the warm tray button function is going to be I obviously already clicked it we're at 85 degrees Fahrenheit like I said, it was a negative 30, I think, or even 17 before I hit that function. And up here in the top right corner, it shows how long my runtime was. 17 hours, 47 minutes, and 51 seconds, which honestly isn't too terrible. Typically when I run a cycle, depending on what it is, we're usually in the 30 hour mark. Now, before I do anything, besides take the trays out, I want to make sure that these potatoes are done before I do any of these bottom functions. If the potatoes are done, then lately I have been letting it natural defrost, so I would hit the no defrost. If these potatoes are not done, then I would hit the more dry time right there, and I can change that. It would typically, um, it's set up to run two extra hours. When I hit that more dry time button, I can change that and do four, six, as many hours as I want. Or my third option right here is the defrost button. I can hit that and let the machine defrost itself. But like I said lately, I have been doing it just naturally. Back here, this is the drainage hose and I have that closed. You want to close that when you run your freeze dryer. I am going to open that if these potatoes are done and that hose just comes all the way down here into this bucket. All that bucket does is it just catches the drainage from the freeze dryer. I know the bucket looked a little dirty. I actually use that for tumbling my rocks. So don't be alarmed. I promise you that's not what's coming out of your freeze dryer. While we wait for the trays to warm on the freeze dryer, I just want to go over some of the things that I use to finish this process. I don't have any half gallon size jars. I'm going to have to get more. So I have quart jars and they'll work just fine. I just like to use the half gallon just because I can fit obviously so much more in there. And these are going to be at your wide mouth. I honestly, in most cases, prefer wide mouth jars. It's just so much easier to when you're canning or just anything in general. To help me get the, or you know, potatoes in this case or anything else into jars, I have my canning jar funnel. Love this. This really helps make the process go a lot easier, less messier, and waste less food. I also have my food processor. You can use a blender. Now there is a lot of debate on whether it is okay to use a food processor or a blender. The reasoning is because say I use this in, or I put it in the dishwasher or I hand wash it. Um, there may be lingering water inside your blender or your food processor. So a lot of people like to put them in gallon bags and then you know, beat it with a um, rolling pin or anything that they may have on hand if you don't have a rolling pin, which is completely fine. Now, I personally have no issues using a blender or my food processor, which I have here. I know that I have not used this in a really long time, so I'm not concerned that there's going to be any lingering water inside the food processor. There is another debate on whether the food processor or blender will heat up your food or whatever you're putting in there and cause moisture. I personally have not experienced that. I have not had a batch go bad. So I think it's all upon preference and what you prefer. And that's totally fine if you're not comfortable using either or. If you just like to put it in a gallon Ziploc bag, then that's totally okay. I just prefer to use this. Of course, you are going to want your spatula to help you get the 
food off the trays and into whatever you're using to break that up. And then, now there has been some back and forth. I'm not 100% sure what the right answer is. I do this for precaution, for my own peace of mind. And I have these oxygen absorbers and I use these inside my canning jars. I have a um, vacuum sealer and it has a function on there where I can use an attachment on that vacuum sealer to suck out the ox moisture, or not moisture, but the um, I can seal it to suck all of that out. And I will put one of these inside the mason jar. Like I said, the debate with that is you don't need one. It's a peace of mind for me and I can always order more of these. I love using the mason jars. They're also, when you buy your freeze dryer, I'm pretty sure it comes with my, Mylar bags. I do use these. I have not used them recently just because I do enjoy the mason jars so much. My thing is for me, if I know that these potatoes are going to be for long-term storage that I'm not going to use for a very long time, then absolutely I will put the food in here. But because I am using them constantly throughout the winter, opening and closing that jar and resealing it, it doesn't make sense to me to use these my Mylar bags. My trays are done warming in the freeze dryer, so let's get those out. When I showed you before we put them in, how they stuck to the trays, this doesn't, this moves around. So it has pulled away from the tray, which is a good sign. And to test this, what you're gonna do, you can taste it to make sure that there isn't any moisture in there. Um, if it's crunchy and it's pulling apart, That tastes so weird. I'm not going to lie. But this tray is definitely done. So let's test the other ones and get those out. I've turned off the freeze dryer so it is way more quiet in here than what it was. I've got all my trays out and all of these are done. So I'm letting the freeze dryer defrost naturally. I'm going to go ahead and get the potatoes in here. This is my Ninja. This is a nine cupper. I absolutely love this. I use this all the time for my freeze dried foods to get them blended up. So they're not chunks when I rehydrate them. So let's get them in here and then get them blended up. I don't even think I'm gonna need my spatula. Maybe so. I was able to get two trays in here, which is pretty good. Don't be afraid to smush this down because you're going to be turning it basically into powder once you get it on the base here of your food processor or blender. I also want to mention when I say you want to try and taste your food to see if, there, if it's cold or if there's any moisture in there. And what I mean by cold, you're gonna be able to tell. I don't know exactly how to describe it to you, but just trying it, it's you can still tell that there's moisture in the food. So depending on what you're freeze drying, I freeze dry raw eggs. So you obviously don't want to test taste test that to make sure that the liquid is all gone. It's raw eggs. The freeze dryer, even though it does have a temperature change and it does freeze them and suck out the moisture, it is not cooking them in any way. So you definitely want to be cautious or keep in mind when you do freeze dry. Sometimes you just have to do the field test and if it crumbles, then they are good to go. But please do not eat raw eggs. Now that we've got this filled up, we're going to go ahead and get it on the base here. We're going to put the lid on. And then we're going to turn it on. I do want to warn you that this may be a little loud, so just be cautious with your volume. 
We're going to hit the power button. And there is a bunch of functions on here. I've got chop, puree, dough, and disc. I don't mess with any of those. I'm just going to do, uh, sometimes I'll do low and then I'll go high, but I'm going to start with the high. <laughs> And you can see that it is basically reduced to like half of what was in here. It says I've got about four cups of potatoes, which is fantastic. So let's move this to one of the mason jars. We're gonna turn it off, push these aside. And I'm gonna try my best to get the food in here without spilling. I always seem to spill, so we'll see how this goes. And it's not 100%. There is, you know, little pieces in here. It's not gonna be perfect, but it's definitely pretty good. I'm wondering, I think maybe I can fit all of the potatoes here in one jar, which would be fantastic. And then when you do this, there's still a lot of room in here. So what I do is I just take whatever spatula I'm using and I'm going to push that down to make more room to get more in here. All right, we'll set that aside and then we'll put the rest of the potatoes in here and get this blended up. I have them inside the mason jars and the next best thing to do is to taste it and see how it is. I'm sure it's not gonna be 100% um, enjoyable just because I didn't add anything to these. I didn't add salt, no seasonings, no butter, no milk or anything. So it's gonna definitely going to be very bland but I wanna see how it reconstitute with water. I have my tea kettle here. I absolutely love this thing. It is an electric tea kettle. And all I have to do is flip this switch here. You wanna make sure that the minimum amount of water is in here and it just rips. It's gonna start boiling here in a second. And depending on how much you, water you have in here, it takes up to a couple minutes, which honestly isn't that bad. So I like to keep it a little bit lower than to the max level just because it does take longer. So we're gonna let this boil. We're gonna get a bowl and a spoon and see how well this is. I grabbed a few more things for this process. The water is done boiling and this is a little bit different. Typically when you are rehydrate or reconstituting things, um, usually it's a one-to-one -one ratio. For some reason with mashed potatoes, it's a little bit different. You want one fourth cup of mashed potatoes to one cup of water. And typically I would do this on the stove, but this is just for fun. So we're just gonna do it down here. I've got my bowl and my measuring cups. So I'm going to take out one fourth cup of mashed potatoes and see how this is. I'm sure it'll probably be a lot better on the stove than in my little setup here in my basement. Now, I'm not 100% sure with the tea kettle how hot this water gets. I'm gonna have to check on that and see what the temperature is for that. It might take a couple of minutes to let this reconstitute. So let's go ahead and seal up these jars in the meantime. So I've got my setup here and I've got my food saver, my vacuum sealer, and I have these, I absolutely love these. I got these online and these are jar sealers and you've got your wide mouth and then you have your regular mouth. I use both, probably the wide mouth more, but I still use them quite a bit. So if you can get both, I highly recommend that you buy both as a set. And 
got my jar or my lid and as a canner I'm sure you know you accumulate so many spent lids and bands and it's really nice I keep them a uh, majority of them just for this purpose so I'm gonna put my lid right on top here with the wide mouth jar sealer on here now I only love this food saver for this reason it does come with an attachment and it took me a while to figure this out because I'd never done this before and I just did not understand but it comes with bags you can use this function for the bags that it comes with never use them but you can also take this off and I didn't know that and it took me so many Google searches to figure that out but that comes off and there's a little hole and the very top and you just set that right on there and then we're going to turn it on to the on function and then on here there's an accessory button on the very bottom and we're going to go ahead and hit that And there you have it it's done simple and easy and I can put this up for storage in the winter now I know I didn't put an oxygen oxygen absorber in there I can do that on a later date that's totally fine but it does not pop and it does not come off so this is sealed for future use now obviously you're not gonna get long-term storage like you would out of the Mylar bags but I have that, like I said, I'm constantly opening these up and using them. And of course, I'll write here the day when I sealed them. I won't change the date if I open it up and reseal it. I typically go through um, my freeze dried food pretty quickly, so I'm not concerned about that. And this basically same thing. There's a little rubber ring in here. Sometimes it does get a little things stick to it so you want to try to make sure that you keep that clean basically the same concept goes in there same thing you are done and then this just goes Right back on, hose goes back in, you are set to go. Lid on, don't forget to date it, and then go ahead and put it in your storage for future use. Now that I think we've pretty much touched base on the process and how I do all of this, I'm pretty sure that the potatoes are done. They are still warm. They still have like a porridge looking consistency. It seems like it's a little more, it is thick, but a little more liquid in my mashed potatoes than what I would prefer. So I may cut back a little bit on the water. Maybe it's not done reconstituting, but I guess we'll find out. Hmm, that is definitely an interesting taste. I definitely can taste the potatoes. They um, use seasoning, absolutely, but honestly, I'm not mad at it. It probably could use a little bit longer. I'm sure it'd be a lot quicker to do this on the stove and I'm probably better results than what I have here. But from what I have and did in my basement, the results, I'm pretty okay with what I have here. The point to do this not only for long-term storage is I can go in my basement and you know grab a mason jar of mashed potatoes and put it in a pot and have it ready in less than 10 minutes not even 10 minutes probably five minutes for my family to eat I know what's in it instead of buying those instant mashed potatoes that you get in the store not throwing any hate whatsoever but the point of us doing this is to cut out the processed foods and the preservatives and all that and I know what's in here and what I'm feeding my family and I know that it's healthy. My 
absolute main goal um, for not okay so my goal for this is to cut out the big boxed stores not completely because I feel like there's going to be something that I will need regardless but if I can do that little by little by little and grow this at my home and preserve it and store it and shy away from the big box stores as much as possible then I know I'm doing all right and that's definitely my goal that's why we're doing this you know to be healthier and it's just something that we enjoy indefinitely and we have such a passion for and I love growing things and seeing what I can turn them into or how I can cook it or you know how I can feed my family with that and um, the best thing I can say is when you are growing, start with your basics. What you use the most in your kitchen, for me, um, celery, onions, and potatoes are and carrots are the base, the staple of my kitchen. So, and especially herbs is too. You, you know, I would suggest starting there. Those are definitely fun to grow on top of that. This was my first real year of growing carrots. I've done it before, but this year was absolutely phenomenal and I cannot wait to grow my, more carrots. I want to thank you guys so much for joining me on this freeze drying video and how I made mashed potatoes with my freeze dryer. It was definitely interesting and I can't wait to create more things with this freeze dryer. Thanks so much for taking the time out of your day. We appreciate you so much. And if you learned anything from this video, go ahead and hit that like, subscribe, and share. We always appreciate that and appreciate you. And we'll see you on the next one. Take care.